Good afternoon and welcome back to another Q News interview. My name is Michael James and I am back for my favourite time of the year. It is drag race time of the year, more specifically RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under, which is just about to launch season two on July 30th. And today we got our first look at the cast. So to help us unpack that a little bit and find out about what is going on, we have one of my favourite judges from the franchise from around the world. Everybody has really, really loved what he brought to the table in season one, and he has been returned to us for season two. He's none other than the, the fabulous and effervescent Mr. Reese Nicholson. Good afternoon, Reese. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining me here in this, the room where I'm being held captive. <laughs> well, you must answer our questions all day about RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under. Great, great. Excellent. And the fun thing about these interviews is because I want to ask you all of the questions and essentially you're really not going to be able to tell us anything because everything is hidden until we get to watch it. It's a complete dream of a thing to have to talk, do press about because I can't, <laughs> I have no answers. I have no, like, and, I, and even I get stressed about, like, I do know something, but I also don't know. There's been times where I'll be doing press for this show and someone will go, oh, because you know this, this and this. And I'll be like, no, I didn't know that. Oh, there is a season three? Like, I don't know. I, ne I never know anything. And there's the things you're supposed to know, the things you're not supposed to know, the things you're supposed to say and the things you're not supposed to say. It must be very yeah, exactly. confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even like, you know, I was posting this morning, like, you know, the, the Queens were released this morning. And as I was posting, I was just like, really, I did before, just before I did a one last check through that, make sure other people had posted. Because I, I can't be the one. I can't be the one that, that makes... That the, breaks the, the embargo. Fight. You ruin yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about you first then. Um, when we last spoke to you, you were on the other side of the world. You're in Canada um, filming a TV show and uh, you wrapped that up and came back and had a beautiful reunion with your uh, other half I saw on Twitter. Um, so oh. what has, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, so what's been on the cards for you since you got back? Where have you had more shows in, in the works um, or has it just been getting ready for Down Under? No, I've been, I toured a stand-up show. Um, the the for that's been kind of my last four months. Um, the months before that, I, I put that show together. I've done some little bits and bobs of acting and stuff, and and then yeah, in January, February, we filmed Drag Race. Um, so yeah, lots. Of, I'm working on a book. Lots of stuff going on. Like it's been kind of a coming coming out of lockdown was uh, kind of. I don't know if you've had the same thing of like becoming busy again, and I'm just not equipped. <laughs> To, to deal with it like I just don't know how to talk to people anymore I have very a small amount of thread conversationally um and but no it's very like I'm I'm very very lucky I'm very like happy to be I'm, I'm busy and busy and blessed blessed and booked yes blessed and booked and, but now you have to put pants on every day which is the biggest challenge really post-COVID I'm, yeah, I'm not I'm just not going to do it and people just have to deal with that I'm not shaking hands and I'm not wearing pants those are the two things I'm bringing out of lockdown the title of your new book yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, um, so take us back. You you came back, finding out when you were going to, well, that you were were the judge, the returning judge for season two. What was that process look like? Did you walk out of filming the first season and Rude just gives you a look? It's like, see you next season, or was there a you know you found yeah, out yeah, a look, week before you turned up? Literally there? said, see you next year. Um, <laughs> the on the on the last day of filming, Rue, uh, when all the queens were gone, and Michelle and I were just sitting there and we were like having a quick chat to say goodbye, and Rue said, um, "Okay, well I'm gonna go, um, but I will see you next year." And then um, Michelle said, "That's what he said to Santino." So you know, it's all <laughs> it's all swigs and roundabouts. Uh, but no, I kind of. But you know, then we didn't know if we were gonna get a season two. Um, so I'm very, and it was like a little, you know, like all kind of. Uh, pieces of content at the moment it's you never know until it's happening like I feel like you know even even with season one I let myself kind of deal with the fact that I was doing that until I was sitting at the, at the desk because who knew if it was going to get cancelled because of COVID who knew if I wasn't going to be able to get there and they just would just drop Joel Creasy in um, <laughs> yeah. it's just hanging that one over your head isn't it we've got another yeah. one they're everywhere um, I mean, that's the thing with these things. Like, you could literally be booked and the show could be ready to go on production. It could have been cancelled two days beforehand. It's just, just the way yeah. the world's rolled at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So you did get booked and you did get there and you've flown over. You're in New Zealand. Um, at what point did you know who the queens were? Um, was it when they were walking out on the runway and you go, oh, yeah. hi, or do you get a yeah, brief I beforehand? Think I see them uh, when they walked out in front of me. We were the, there was some kind of hotel quarantine that we had to do. And I had suspected that maybe some of the Queens in there, 
like I thought I might have seen like when we go for walks around car parks and stuff I think I was like I wonder if that's one of them but we you know we would not talk we were, we were all kind of trying to be good and not yeah. like interact with each other um but you know when you see someone like Queen Kong you kind of like I know that I know that that's Queen Kong um <laughs> but uh but it, it yeah I didn't see them until they were all out in front of me and what was great is that this year we do have some kind of newer queens like I feel like a lot of last year's season was kind of these are some well-known queens like you know you know who Art and Karen are um whereas this year having them all in front of me it was great because I didn't know who a bunch of them were I didn't know what their stories were and so I got to watch the show as a like I got to be inside the show almost like a fan of the show um which I am anyway but yeah being able to like not having no expectations on any of the queens was pretty thrilling this year no it's a good ground work to start with so yeah. tell me now I don't want to use the word favorites and we don't want to do any speculation here because they're all your favorites we know that but when they all walk out there we've got these 10 new queens was there someone when you first walked them and you just went wow I just I can't wait to see what that person has got to show us uh yeah her name was Michelle Visage um <laughs> it's got the meatiest tuck in the business <laughs> um, I mean, no, not really. Like, and that's my honest answer. That's not even like a kind of trying to be political answer. Um, no, like I, I think, especially when they work as groups and that kind of stuff, there is, there's no point kind of uh, as, as one of the side judges as well, you don't want to put any kind of, um, <laughs> you don't want to be like that one, that's my queen because <laughs> Rue could just send them home. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, like, you've just got to, you like a fan of the show as well. You've got to invest in all of them. Absolutely. And look, it's a very interesting range of talent. Um, again, like last season, um, very broad spread, broad spread, broad range. Um, like I saw Beverly Kills is 21 years old. She's a fetus. Wow. How dare she? <laughs> and what's, what's interesting as well is like sometimes when they're all out in front of you and they've got so much makeup on, like there's a couple, um, like Aubrey's pretty young. Um, Yuri's pretty young. Um, and that's it. No, uh, but like, I haven't memorized all their ages, but like there's some little babies in there. And what is wild is to see how fully functioning they are. Like when I was their age, I was not, I was not getting my shit together to be on a television program. I was like, I was, I was not working hard on anything. I don't think when I was their age. So to see them so like fully formed as people is, is always incredible. And like that, and that's why you can't have expectations because sometimes if you do let yourself do that, you kind of go like, oh, well, they've got a lot to learn. And I'm sure that older queen like knows everything. And then sometimes as we've seen from other franchises that can be turned on its head or that can be correct. Or yeah, it's, you got to just let the show be the show to you. Wow. That was the most vague way to say that. You just want the show be the show to you. What did I mean by that? Look, let's it's make it interpretive. We'll just take it from yeah, what yeah. we will. It just yeah, sounds so really wise, yeah. really wise. I had some ayahuasca before this interview. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Look, now speaking of expectations, um, I, look, it's fair to say that the first season got mixed reviews and I think some people loved it and I think that some people really didn't love it. Um, and that's just the nature of Drag Race because Drag Race fans are uh, something well, unto themselves. the nature of everything. Yes, true. <laughs> but Drag Race in particular. Every single thing that has ever happened, <laughs> people either do like it or they don't like it. That is the world. <laughs> That's, I, I don't like, you know, and not to dwell on it too much. Like I won't talk about last year at all. Like, um, but like in that way, um, it was, it, people worked really hard on it. People work really hard to make lots of things. And if you don't like it, no one's, there's, uh, no one's putting a gun to you to like watch the television program. People, like the television program that people worked really hard and were very passionate about. That's why when there's like bullshit, like, RuPaul wasn't there. Oh, I know. <laughs> he was and he was, and it's incredibly rude for people to think that he wasn't there because the amount of work that was put into him being there. Anyways, I get like all riled up about it because it's like the, the I keep saying this over and over and over again. I've said it in interviews heaps of times, but it's like the show is made for you, not in spite of you. It is made for you to enjoy. It is not made as if like an aggressive, like, well, I bet, I bet they won't like it if we do this. It's like, 
yeah, no, that's not what we're doing. We, we really want to make something that you like. Um, yeah, look, absolutely. And look, I'm one of the people that loved it. Um, and you're absolutely right. It is the nature of, of everything. Um, I just think with that, that fandom with drag race, it can be so toxic sometimes. It's people think their mm. opinions matter more than they do other people's. But my point, yeah. I suppose, was do you think, um, and is, is there any kind of approach that we're going to see that shows us, um, I suppose, a different tack, a different level that we're bringing to season two that's trying to make it different from what we saw from season one? Or is it just all about the queens and that's our focus i think it, it needs to be about the queens and that's the focus like it's yeah I, I and there are definite there are definite evolutions in the show but like if people are, are demanding you know there are some valid there are absolutely some valid demands and and i hope that people see that those changes um but at the same time maybe if, if, if it's so hard for you to deal with the production values of this television program, maybe the world is a little bit tough. <laughs> like, I just, I just find it, like, so interesting. I, I, just, I just hope people um, can not just deal with the show, but enjoy it. In, in, enjoy it in the way that it is in, like, it's a competition reality show about drag queens. Yes, it's very important, but it's also not important at the same time. I think that's a, a very good point to take away from that. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, before we wrap up, uh, uh, one thing that I find interesting and I've been finding out with uh, watching the current season of Big Brother and watching the people, um, the, the contestants being outside of the show and commenting on it, um, what's the experience like for you, um, I suppose, recording this so far away, like it was recorded at the beginning of the year and then now having to watch back and have people treating you though as though it's actually happening? What is it like? I mean, there is a kind of strangeness to it being filmed a really long time ago, but it is like, it is so long ago. I, I watch it because I don't always watch things that I'm on, but I, I watch Drag Race because as someone that's on the main stage, I don't really often see what's in the workroom. And so I get to now watch the show and be like, oh, that's why she was pissed off at her that time. And that's why, like, I don't know anything that's kind of going on. Like, and I think it's on purpose. I think so we were able to judge kind of blindly about what we see on the main stage and not what happened that, that you know, that night um, and that day. During the, but, you know, I think it must be, it's fine for me. I think it must be strange for the Queens. Um, but it is that kind of, that's that's what the show is. Like it is, you, you, you do what you do in the show and then you hope that it comes, that you thought, you hope that what you were doing is what is, is portrayed on the show. But, you know. Even things that I say sometimes on the show, I always think like, oh, I wonder if that was taken as funny. And it comes out and I'm like, oh, that was harsher than I meant it to be. And I said that to her face. Um, but, you know, that's what being a judge is, I guess. All right now, of course, without giving anything away, um, I suppose, what was your, is there a, a favourite moment or something that really captivated you for this season that you're really looking forward to? to getting to watch back on the screen. Um, something you're just like, yes, I can't wait till we get to see that. I think just the, the Queens as a whole, and again, this is like a, gonna sound like a kind of standard written question, but uh, answer. But um, I think the fact that the, these are the season two girls and they're not tied to the fact that they're the first season of the show. And there is a bit of like a, um, a feeling of they're not, they don't have the thought of like, how is this gonna work? I better like this hanging over them. Um, and so there's a freedom to them. There is a little bit of like a let's fucking get this done type of vibe. And that was a real thrill to watch. There's some, without giving anything away, there are some definite, I kind of hinted on this earlier, but there are some definite storylines in the show this year where you see proper, like people having major developments, like, and kind of, as Oprah would say, aha moments in the show. And like, you think it's good television. It's like happening in front of you and like seeing Rue at kind of full RuPaul talking about the inner saboteur type of stuff. That is, that is the, that's the good shit in the show to me. That's great. And, I, and that's kind of what I love about All Star 7 at the moment is the good shit, oh, um, like yeah. where we are getting to see people having moments and interactions and relationships without trying to, you know, rip each other's hair out. So the fact we get to well, see exactly, more of that stuff is great. And I think that's what we do. Like, I think maybe international viewers thought it was a little bit strange that of our first season that they're not trying to destroy each other all the time. It's like, no, we're like pretty supportive here. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's, I don't know, maybe they just expected us to be just as bitchy as the Americans, but really we're just not here to fuck spiders. So. No, exactly. <laughs> 
Right, well, Reese, it has been an absolute pleasure and um, we cannot wait to see you on our screens with all of our 10 fantastic queens coming up. Now, make sure you tune in. The show will be airing on the 30th of July on Stan Australia exclusive, where you can see Reese, Michelle, RuPaul and our 10 queens com competing for the season two crown. Thank you very much for joining us again, Reese. Thank you so much. I can't wait for you to all meet the queens. <laughs> Me too. Thank you very much. My name is Michael James and I will see you next time.